Hi y'all, so today I wanted to share with you what I thought of the Holbein acrylic gouache um, set here. I bought the 18 color scent the last time that I was in Japan, which was almost a year ago now, and I only now just tried them, so it's pretty terrible. Um, this is the color spread for the 18 color set. A nice, pretty selection of colors. I like it a lot. Um, and I also picked up a couple individual tubes because they were not in the set, and I really like these colors. So we have a hot pink opera. Uh, aqua blue and ice green very pretty especially together I think those colors like look really neat together hopefully not covering it all up so <clears throat> with those I tried to give it a fair assessment in a very short amount of time and to do so I redid a little watercolor painting this is the original watercolor that I did um, it's of a Japanese garden that I visited in Kyoto I don't remember the name of it, um, but I took a ton of pictures there, so this is kind of similar to what the actual thing looked like. I simplified the background a little bit just because it was super busy. Um, and then for the this test, I really did it with the acrylic gouache, but <clears throat> I did not um, make very realistic tones. I, I left it really overly saturated. Um, part of the reason was because I noticed right away that the color was super rich and to um, neutralize it a little bit I would end up using a lot more paints than I wanted to set out for that particular sitting uh, especially because these tubes are so small and I don't want to use up like too much white or anything so I just went with it I did super saturated and it almost looks cartoony and I kind of like it so it's neat to have the two different versions uh, but I'll let you decide for yourself what you think of them um, there are no affiliate links to this item below because I didn't see them on Amazon, but I might include a couple links to other places you might be able to find them. Again, I bought them in Japan, and I actually had to hunt them down too because they, they didn't have them everywhere. <clears throat> but I didn't go to a lot of specialty art shops. I went to art sections in different places. So um, I found them, I think, in one of the Aeon malls in Kyoto, um, one of many that I had went to, and all the other ones didn't have them. And I had to look them up by the Holbein website to find them. Um, they are, I think, quite a bit cheaper in Japan, obviously, um, <clears throat> but if you are wanting to try them, uh, I just wanted to give you a good idea of what they're like, because I kind of went in blind. I didn't really do any research about what they are. Um, I like acrylic and I like gouache, so I thought, acrylic gouache, I'll give them a shot, but they are not anything like real gouache. The reason why I think they're called gouache is because they have that matte oh, opacity to them. Um, but they behave and function just like regular acrylic. So you can see for yourself. I hope you enjoy this um, little review kind of testing. And let me know below if you've tried them, if you like them, um, or what are your thoughts on them. And if you plan to ever check them out if you haven't tried them. I would love to hear from you. And if you have any pieces that you'd like to share, you can always hit me up on Instagram as well. So my Instagram is Ashton um, Kaylee. So I don't know if I did that the right direction. It'll be here somewhere. Ashton Kaylee. And um, <clears throat> yeah, look forward to hearing from you. Bye. So first thing first, prepping my surface. I'm using a fluid six by eight watercolor block. And I'm using a washi tape that's approximately half an inch wide to give me a five by seven finished piece. With a gray coal erase pencil, I'm just doing a light sketch of the picture here. I uh, really didn't need to go into details, I've realized later, because a lot of those lines I wouldn't be able to see once I started adding color. So next is picking out the palette for the picture. And I mistakenly used a ceramic plate as my palette. I would definitely recommend using something maybe disposable um, that you can just toss afterwards because it's, it's going to be kind of annoying to clean this plate after each time I do this. I started with the aqua blue for my sky and some of the white. And automatically I noticed that this was super saturated and I was very limited on how much white I have so um, I decided early on that this was going to be highly unrealistic. I do like the finish of them. 
blending is not too difficult but it dries pretty fast especially it being on paper and because of the opacity of it you have to make sure that you're doing your blending definitely um, before that layer completely dries it is quite nice though because of the opacity you can easily fix uh, any areas that you may have messed up on and it lends itself to a nice graphic-y look kind of cartoony which sometimes is fun to do the other thing I liked about it is that it takes very little bit of paint I know the p piece that I'm working on is quite small so maybe that's not a fair assessment but each time I used some paint, I squeezed out just the tiniest bit amount. So I feel like even though these tubes aren't that large, it's going to last me a while. And my cat has joined me for this voiceover, so you might be able to hear her. Right now she's just crawling all over my lap. Because the paint is a little thick and um, not easily blended, I did find some of the smaller areas a little bit harder to do, but I think appropriate brush sizes for what you're working on would help eliminate some of that problem. I just didn't want to dirty too much. When I started this, I didn't have a lot of time before I had to stop and leave for work, so I kind of brushed through this little painting. I don't have a lot of experience in gouache. I have played with it a little bit. I do have quite a bit of experience in acrylic and despite the name, acrylic gouache is actually just acrylic paint that has a matte finish. So the finish work looks a lot like regular gouache, but it doesn't behave the same way. Blending and um, reactivating paint is different to non-existent. It is quite fun to work with though. I like the finished look of it. Maybe not as much as I like regular gouache, but it was worth the experimentation and buying it in Japan was actually cheaper than I can find it here, so no hard feelings there. I could definitely see myself using it for a variety of different types of work. Some of the more graphic-y styles, two cute cartoons where I don't have a lot of build-up or layers. The vibrancy of those pigments are quite nice. I would definitely change my workflow a little bit though working with these in the future. I painted the tree branches much earlier than I should have. I should have finished some of that background before working forward. Again, this wasn't too well thought out. At this point, I have a few colors really starting to dry on the plate, 
and like I said before, being acrylic paint, you can't reactivate it once it's dry, so that could potentially waste a lot of paint if you're not careful about how much you pour out to start. I definitely recommend having a bit of a game plan when you are approaching a piece, thinking about what colors you're going to lay in first, the order and amount that you might need. I haven't tried it yet, but I think maybe the next time I may try my palette on a Stay Wet palette. I have one of the Masterson's palettes where you have the hydrated sponge underneath and then the permeable um, tearaway palette on top. I might even try just a wet paper towel as the base. So there you have it. 